Okay, going to another update. Um, it's there's a whole lot of data work that happened today. I'm going to go through it all pretty quickly. Some of it is fairly tedious, um, but yeah, I will try to be very quick with my progress here. Um, I've forgotten which one I was up to there. Well, let's just click these through. There's some actual code work as well as data prep. Oh yeah, and you can see from these years that this is all in the future. Um, the reason for that was that um, I'm attacking the work by comments and it just so happened that there was some stuff that was commented out that was for future years and um, I didn't want to set things up so that things would break later so I was just standardizing and making it making sure that it was in the right form for um, everything else just for consistency Um, but the other thing that I did today was uh, doing the reconciliation with the bank records for um, Civilized AI and there we have it. Okay, so let's begin our journey. So this, um, what happened here? Yeah, so adding these two records that have come from the, the bank statements. Um, and the other thing too is, you see this comment here, um, line one, move depreciation events to Stochastic because Bodhi was sold to Stochastia. So I found I'm using Bodhi all the time for Stochastia and not for Civilize. So it made sense to put that asset in the name of Civilize, especially because I want to wind down Civilize so I can just focus on Stochastia. So we ended up getting rid of all this and then adding in records that were matching the bank statements. So it just became two, two things in there. And this is the same story again, the depreciation events have gone. And here, this is now Stochastia, so the depreciation events have appeared. Um, I'm actually not too sure about if I'm doing the right thing accounting wise with that, um, but I'll worry about that later. I think the assumption that I've made is reasonable. Um, that being that the the value is not new, so the the item is not new, and the um, the amount of value that has decreased happened according to the depreciation in the previous company. So if that continues in the second company, it should be okay. But I will check that out later. Um, so yeah, here again we removed the depreciation events, added the G Suite um, expense to the civilized record. And this is the depreciation events have appeared for Stochastia here in that month. And yeah, anyway, this is a lot of this. So bam, 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 bam. This is all the same thing. Basically moving the depreciation events, working in the, um, the bank records. And just tap through all this because it's all the same. Um, this is a template month. So... March 2024 hasn't happened yet, so I'm just setting it up so it can handle the data when it does happen. Um, and the depreciation events are known in advance, so they keep coming over. So even though this is in the future for Stochastia, it's there. Um, yep, I'm just going to keep tapping. So this is like partly template, partly um, moving depreciation events over. Oh, there's a lot of this. Um, okay, so this is this is a little subtle difference, not a subtle difference. This is something I mentioned earlier. Um, basically, these are new lines. I've set up the templates for the months for these financial years for Stochastia, so they didn't exist before, but now they do, which is what's going on here. Um, and this is the for the financial year 2023 to 2024 it's just linking in each of the months uh, so that's a template for the for that year and uh, it's the same here 
but it's been so I had some other over engineered solution here and I've replaced it with something that's simpler um, and that's the same thing that's the same thing now this is what is this this is a template for stochastia so this is all just templates for stochastia same thing if I notice something different I'll pick up on okay so now we are in code land um, five minutes into the update so this is a uh, meta class it's pretty cool so if I just go over here for a sec um, so what this meta class lets me do is it lets me create an object that um, has some pseudo immutability in the sense that the attributes get set at creation and then if I try to set an attribute um, it'll throw this attribute error and say cannot set attribute so we can um, we can see that test down here testing set attribute so we create an object to the class we try to access that property and assign a value to it and um, we try to do that and it should throw an attribute error which it does and so this test passes um, and that's really cool because that keeps my code sane um, and yeah so that test didn't exist before I'd hacked that now it's now it's compliant so moving on to the next thing um, so the other thing that was happening is that oh if I go here and I try to search for the next file that's commented you'll see I get over 20,000 results and the first result that's here um, is not the thing that I need to attend to I mean I need to attend to it eventually but not next so in order to address that um, I added this new function to the test routine which finds the next comment and so um, it goes through all the pi files and it it checks to see if the lines start with a comment now there's a evolution of this function so this is just the initial draft but basically that's the point of it so that the idea is that if all the tests pass it'll send me to the next file in fact I'll just try it right now you get to see how it works um, and I'll just close this so you can see the magic of it so the tests all pass and then upon passing it says found next comment needing attention it's in this file and this is the line and you can see it's opened that file for me and it's put the cursor on that line it just makes the workflow so much nicer so that's that's what's happened here very nice little workflow improvement um, then the next thing I noticed was that sometimes I would be editing things and I might be in some other file like back in this meta class and every time I <clears throat> made some change the test routine would run again and it would launch this file and bring me to that comment line and that was annoying so what I wanted to do was I wanted to make it that it only sent me there when there was no outstanding commits and so I created this uh, get outstanding commits function uh, which just checks the git status to see if there's anything left over uh, this is the first version of it so it's not in the proper form but that's the intention of this function um, it's meant to check is there work that still needs to be committed because if there is don't go and show me the new next comment um, okay so this is a better version of that it's been converted into a function and it just returns true or false and then uh, it's now been moved into test.py which is good that's where it needs to live and then um, I removed that file that I created because it had been moved into test.py and then um, uh, this is an update to the metaclass din just making it compliant for the uh, line lengths and then we have gone to period state where um, what's happening here a few things are happening here looks like just cleaning up mostly code like code length compliance um, I don't think anything substantial has happened in terms of um, functionality however look at this I got rid of all these comments so that was me hunting for comments these comments were safe to be deleted so they went and then I did a bit of review just cleaned things up um, so moving on to the next file um, what's happening here so this is another meta class it's used 
by cache assets and non cache assets so I'll just I'll just show you as X assets and it gets used by uh, these two classes they both inherit from it cache assets and non cache assets basically it just consolidates some of the logic that is relevant to both of these without it having to be written in two places so I tended to that we had a hacky test the hacky test got replaced with a test that actually covered what that class is meant to do and that's what's happened there um, then uh, the next thing is that you know how I wanted the the test routine to take me to this comment every time um, it was the right appropriate moment well the appropriate moment was once I'd finished doing commits which is something that happens in Gitter and the test routine only runs when a save occurs of a Python file within the project directory so I'm just I just added this in here a save and a load um, of this particular file for the sake of triggering a another run of the test routine without this the test routine wouldn't run and it wouldn't then search for the next comment so that's what's happening here I'm not in love with this solution I'm probably going to make it nicer or hide it or something I haven't thought about it, it doesn't really matter right now um, in fact maybe the solution here is to not live here maybe it's to live somewhere else anyway that's what it, what it does right now and how it works um, so next added this cyan bit for uh, this so you can see that this is cyan just a bit of aesthetics um, then we've got uh, what else we've got here so this is just reformatting so previously I had multiple lines and here I've consolidated it so it's like file name uh, line number and then that's followed by the actual line for reference to see oh, okay what's going on um, so that's just a little bit of formatting a little bit of aesthetics uh, then updating of the revenues and expenses class you can see here that we had a hacky test it's been replaced with a proper test um, you can see here these have been named poorly um, but you know doesn't really matter in the sense that we need to make this engine work not make beautiful code so um, the rationale or what it, hmm, what matters in this context if I go to revenues and expenses class is um, that this code is protected from radioactivity so um, if there's a decay of this code somehow uh, we'll pick up on it with these tests so when I wrote these tests what I did was I took um, all this well all of the the code that, that makes the class what it is and I went through it line by line and if it was something that couldn't be deleted like this it has a corresponding test that covers that line um, and the reason for that line so if the line is there for a reason the test is testing the reason and I'm laboring a point here this video is going to be very long I'm sorry um, let's keep going so revenues and expenses class has a proper test now and then we've got um, what have we got we've got some data work here just making things clean um, setting up templates for the future um, because a moment ago you would have seen I got rid of lines that had comments and I uncommented them that's because I'm, I'm hunting comment lines and they were the next ones to go okay so what's happening here uh, so this one I just got rid of these comments because they were sorted because I had moved to the depreciation events I no longer needed these two comments okay and then the same things happening here these were commented making them uncommented so the little comment things not being triggered by them but in order for that to work I needed to make sure that I had um, uh, files that were being referenced by these import statements so here's one of them it's really just a little template if something happens in that month it can go into this events list it might be that this thing becomes redundant in the future we have some better way of doing things but this is how the system works right now so just tap through all this this is still template set up um, then you can see here uh, attending to the 
test code again for the find next line. Um, so the I here was the index and not the, the count. And so just bumping that by plus one so that it shows the actual number line, sorry, line number. Um, and yeah, um, then down here you can see that it will only do the find next comment if the result of the tests is pass and um, there are no outstanding commits, which is what I want or what I want today. And then what's happening here? Other than this, just adding in this sorted bit here um, to make sure that the first file that gets checked is the one that's alphabetically first. Um, and that is that. And then the next thing is, so actually this is a good example here. If I go to here, you can see that this commented line has two spaces that precede it. So before this line was being skipped because I didn't have this left strip in. So I've added the left strip so that this line and lines like it will get picked up. And that brings us to the end of today's work. And tomorrow I will attempt to um, make this event get processed correctly by the system and address any um, issues arising. Now, this is where it gets interesting because we're now starting to deal with things that include US dollars and assets that are changing value every time that we have a transaction related to them. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you for making it 16 minutes into my, or 17 minutes into my video. Oh my God. I wanted to do a one minute video. I'm going to have to get better at that. Um, but yeah, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.